very kind introduction. Um, I'm really pleased to be here this morning and just give you a short presentation about what we've been doing in, in the northwest of England. Uh, I think the previous speakers have kind of outlined the policy landscape and the drivers for, for this very exciting area. Uh, and what I'd like to do is really um, focus down on what's happening on the ground and how we're trying to encourage activity in the northwest around this, this very important area. Um, I'm with the, the Regional Development Agency, so we have a very keen interest in this because of the economic development potential. Um, we're, we're also, you know, climate change is also a big deal for us. Uh, we have a climate change action plan. So I see this area, you know, like renewables, is, it, 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 it's a win-win situation in terms of, of jobs, the green jobs agenda, and, and tackling climate change. So I, I also have the, the privilege to be the chair of the Northwest Tidal Energy Group, which was formed a couple of years ago, which I'll, I'll tell you more about. Um, just a very quick geography lesson for those of you who are not familiar with, with the Northwest of England. Uh, based up there in that red area, so it's Cumbria, Cheshire, uh, Maria's hometown of Liverpool, Manchester. A uh, very varied region. You've got the kind of Beatrix Potter type stuff in the Lake District and the dark satanic mills around north of Manchester. Manchester. Um, the region isn't, isn't really those things, but it is. You know, it's a modern, dynamic economy worth over £100 billion pounds a year. Great strengths in things like digital, creative industries, engineering, aerospace, and dare I say nuclear. Um, so a very, very dynamic economy. About 7 million people living in there. I'm you know, very proud to come from that region. Um, it's also worthwhile mentioning we've got eight premiership football teams, which only any other region can boast. Um, but as a resident of Bolton, I think it may be a bit lower than eight next year. Okay. Um, one key feature of the region is we, we have got the, the Irish Sea, and we've got 350 miles of coastline. Um, and, and that coastline is of great immediate value. Uh, that, that shot there is, is from Formby Beach. And, uh, it's the, the Anthony Gormley sculptures there, another place. And I think that kind of symbolises the, the, a lot of the tensions and conflicts around the coastal areas. It's, it's a municipal value, it's got industrial value. Um, I think if the photographer had framed that slightly differently, he could have got Burbo Bank wind farming as well. Um, so there's, there's an energy resource there. Um, and, and clearly there's a great amenity value and, and the wildlife, there's numerous areas of triple S I So you know, developing wave and tidal resources, there's, there's huge conflicts to try and balance. And I think that's part of what we're trying to do in the Northwest Tidal Energy Group, group develop this dialogue and, and debate with all the stakeholders. Um, what we've got really in the Northwest in terms of wave and tidal resources, I, I rather garish colours, I apologise for that. Um, Slightly, the, the image on the, on the left is around tidal stream velocities, and you can see the tidal stream velocities around Anglesey and Isle of Man, if you can make those out. It's just outside our area, unfortunately, so we can't really claim to, to have any, any uh, means of exploiting those. But the image on the, on the right there is, is around tidal ranges, and that's where we've got the, the key feature for the region. Some of the estuaries in the region have got enormous tidal ranges, second only to the River Severn. River Mersey uh, on spring tides is, is, is a 10 metre uh, tidal range, so that's a you know, huge energy potential there to exploit. So we're about tidal range um, and uh, looking at some of the estuarine environments, you know, Mersey, River Dee, um, Morgan Bay and then Solway Firth, which of course we share with our Scottish colleagues. Um, so that's, that's our resource. Um, we really started probably in 2005, 2006, when we sponsored um, Professor Richard Burroughs at the Proud Ocean and Graphic Laboratory to, to carry out some theoretical work on what the energy resource was in the region. And Richard, um, being a civil engineer, thought that barrages were the answer here. And uh, he, he developed some very sophisticated models of the whole tidal flow on the Eastern Irish Sea and, and came up with some very impressive figures that, you know, there's a maximum theoretical potential of 12 gigawatts. Uh, from some of our river estuaries, um, generating perhaps 5% of the UK's electricity. You know, so quite impressive figures. And I think that, that raised awareness quite a lot that, that we have this resource on our doorstep. I mean, there have been previous studies of the River Mersey and, and Morgan Bay in the, the 80s, but I think this study really, really re revitalised interest. And we, we had a number of kind of would-be developers, um, a lot of academics, 
uh, other interested parties, other stakeholders, Natural England, RSPB, all felt that you know there was there was a need for a forum for debate and and really to, to get some sort of roadmap of how we might take some of these schemes forward. So we, we formed the Northwest Tide Energy Group uh, about two three years ago, just to bring all these people together. And, and we're basically a networking group. Um, we, we meet you know once every two or three months and. Uh, we, we sit around and debate the issues, we get invited speakers in, um, and we regularly get some 40 or 50 people turning up. Very, very enthusiastic. There's a huge energy in that group. Um, and it, it's, you know, it's a pleasure to chair it, difficult at times. Um, so, the high levels of interest, um, you know, we've got some developers, and I'm, I'm just going to a couple of slides, I'll, I'll show you about those. Uh, I say, re really, how we can support these people and promote this stakeholder dialogue, which is very, very important. Um, you know, without, without the buy-in from local communities, these schemes are going to face enormous difficulties. As I say, we're talking about Merlin, Solway, and we've, we've done work on the River Dublin, which is up in Cumbria, Morgan Bay, and River Wire, which is, is Lancashire. Uh, just briefly run, run through some of the things we've actually done. We, we, we funded um, sort of pre-commercial feasibility studies, and, and we've moved on quite significantly with, with the Mersey scheme, working with Peel Holdings to do a lot more in-depth work and, and the launch of the first phase report was uh, yesterday or today, I can't remember answering who's in the audience will, will correct me. Um, we, we've got a, a really useful starting point there for where we go with the River Mersey, what sort of options might be available and we have a stand just outside with some copies of that report and there's people there more expert than me who can, who can talk to you about it. But we're, we're looking at you know, a significant scheme, bigger than 100 megawatts. Um, I, I think, you know, if, if you build a barrage, you, you could get sort of three or four gigawatts, but, you know, will we do that? I don't know. We, we really need to, it's a whole question of kind of working out the balance between the environmental impacts and the energy resource. You know, barrages extract the maximum amount of energy, but you have the biggest environmental impact. So where, where do we balance? Where do we get the, the right schemes appropriate for everybody? Uh, I, won't, I won't talk through that. I'm sure you're anxious for a caffeine fix. Um, Solway is, is another study we've just completed, um, which is jointly funded by North West Development Agency, the Nuclear Decommissioning Authority, um, and Scottish Enterprise. All those three parties, their public bodies, had an interest in the Solway um, Nuclear Decommissioning Authority because of the, the redundant power station at Chapel Cross. And really, that was you know fairly high level. What what are the options available again, just to really give a bit more meaning to what the resource might be. Um, and we, we, we looked at nine potential schemes and uh, Carl Crow had done some modelling work and again we've got a copy of the report out there and I say people are more expert than me. Um, I think coming through, I mean these things are not cheap, you know, it's a uh, high capital cost um, with the sort of technologies around at the moment, the cost of energy generation seems to be quite high and whether that's attractive to, to developers, I think we would be very much welcome any dialogue with developers and utilities. Um, but as new technologies come along, some of the type of flow devices, well, hopefully some of those costs can come down. So where do we go for the future? Um, well, you know, we're not we're not doing this to produce lots of reports. You know, as a regional development agency, we'd like to see something in the water, generating energy, creating jobs, giving value to the region. Um, but we realise it's quite a quite a long, hard road. Uh, and there's, there's a lot of questions to answer, lots of debate to be had. And as I say, it's, it's really how can we balance the environmental impacts against the, the commercial attractiveness of these schemes? And, and you know, group, that's what we're, we're, we're debating. Um, I think there's questions around technology development. As I say, the costs seem to me quite high, I'm not an expert, but they do need to come down, I think, before we, we, we're going to get a lot of interest in, in this, these kind of technologies. Um, I think the other important role for our group as well is around sharing information uh, and networking and, and mutual support because uh, these are pioneering schemes and uh, you know people are, have problems and there's a lot of shared difficulties so uh, you know we hope that our group is, is going to prosper uh, and, and a growing future and, and hopefully we'll, we'll see some real schemes in the northwest ahead of everywhere else, who knows. Okay, I won't keep you any longer. We have to stand outside, so please come and talk to us. You're very welcome to see you. Thank you very much.